the medical center director contacted our 24-7 duty phone number and indicated that the facility had reviewed multiple instances going back to January of 2018 and had identified inpatients who had suffered severe low blood sugar, all of which, with the exception of one, uh, had passed away shortly thereafter. The victims in this case were all elderly males. They all had various health conditions. However, the clinical expectation was that they were all supposed to be discharged. Death did not appear to be imminent. Some of the medical doctors found it unusual, first of all, that there were multiple non-diabetic patients that were dying of these severely low blood sugars. There was no logical reason why their blood sugar plummeted to such dangerously low levels. Within a day of opening their investigation, they contacted the local FBI office, and we got involved. Through time cards, work schedules, and other records, that helped narrow down the possible list of subjects or suspects that could be involved in the case. It quickly became apparent there were a total of four individuals at the hospital out of 1,200 employees who were there at each of the dates um, for these events. Rita Mays was an uncertified nursing assistant who worked in the medical surgical unit that they referred to as Ward 3A. She was responsible for taking the vitals of patients, intake and outtake, as well as taking glucometer or finger stick readings of blood sugar levels of patients. Uh, it is uh, 8.17 p.m. Special Agent Earl Gilliam here with Miss Janice. Rita Mays. What's your title? I'm a uh, nurse's aide. In the initial interview, you really just want her to do as much talking as possible so then go back later and impeach the information that she gave us. Our team was directly across the hall to just listen in. We were putting the pieces together to see what we could make of, of what she had to say. Are uh, you ever administer insulin to patients? No. Not at all? No. The aides are not to give any type of meds. And, and what about the med room? Do you go to the med room where to keep the medications? The only time <coughs> that I've and gone in there is when I've been with a, um, with a nurse. She denied being in the medication room alone, which we knew was contradictory with what witnesses told us previously. And what's important there is that the insulin was stored in the medication room. Some of Rita Mays' coworkers on 3A had various accounts that stuck out to us as far as red flags. Uh, she more or less did not act normal when compared to the rest of her coworkers. There were some instances when she, where she held patients' hands uh, while crying bedside with them as well too, which a lot of the staff indicated to us was was abnormal i'm not going to find that what you're telling me i'm not going to find that part of it's not true or all of it's not true no sir i will swear i will swear to it and, and you i will swear know. to it if, if we had to go to court i would swear to it would you be able to take a polygraph concerning this and pass it I will not take a polygraph. Why not? Why not? I'm asking. Because I am in, I have a torn ACL and I have constant pain and I wouldn't pass it. Okay. You, you, the pain would make you not pass it? Yes, sir.
we learned that Rita May's husband had been in jail during the times in which the murders took place. Rita May's husband would call her almost every morning after her overnight shift ended. Night. What is it? Oh, yeah. During some of these calls with her husband, Rita indicated her struggles with her interactions with these patients. At 4 o'clock in the morning, I had to take over sitting one of the one-on-one, and the one I was sitting with, I wanted to freaking strangle. What? I couldn't keep him in bed. They had given him how doll and that didn't work, so they gave him two shots of Haldol, and he still was wound up. When she returned the following shift after having placed that call and made those comments, the same patient suffered uh, low blood sugars again, indicative of this patient being administered insulin two different occasions. We had a special agent from the FBI Behavioral Analysis Unit come out. They offered for Special Agent Carrie Robbins to participate and to conduct the interview. We had been prepping her for it, just one interviewer in the room. My understanding is, did you win the Nurse of the Year Award uh, the year before last, Nurse's Aid? Yeah, and I've heard that. And I've heard that you're the go-to person. You do exemplary work. The interviewer does pay compliments to Mays that would really allow Mays to agree with her and engage her in talking. It builds a little bit of rapport, but it also makes Rita feel that she has the power in the conversation. You can see she's hunched her shoulders and, and drawn her arms across her body as um, pretty defensive. So to me, I think she was panicking a little bit. I think with lawyer, you're sitting out. From here on out, I need a lawyer.
right after the interview, there was a major payoff because uh, within a few hours of that end of the second interview, she actually buys a book called I'm Dead Now What? Indicating that she's having potentially some suicidal thoughts. Why? Because she's just been told she is the prime suspect in all of these cases. It almost gave us more fuel to figure this out. We're gonna get to the bottom of this. Between the second interview in August of 2018 and October of 2019, the bulk of the investigative work was complete during that time period. The investigation involved a review of hundreds of thousands of VA employee emails, years worth of internet browsing activity, a review of hundreds of hours of recorded phone calls, a review of other electronic media and electronic evidence as well. What we learned at that point in the investigation was that uh, Rita would talk with other staff members on Facebook Messenger, and they would, in real time, uh, be discussing patients and what was going on on the ward. And Rita was referring to some of our victims. What happened to this patient who was in this room? And what about this patient? So she was following up to see, essentially, did they live or did they die? The interviews were important despite not obtaining a confession. There was no eyewitness, no surveillance camera footage, no murder weapon, no DNA, no fingerprint. Therefore, the culmination of the interviews strengthened the investigation. Although we did not get the verbal answers and, and the confessions that we were looking for, just to be able to tap into the mindset of Rita was just as important.